As video creators and photographers, we are not just looking for the perfect camera, but also for perfect gear around that. For example, a perfect camera bag. For me, that's a bag that's flexible enough to use it as an everyday bag, as well as for travel. It should offer good organization, carry all my gear, be weather sealed, and all of that, of course, while being small, lightweight, and most important, stylish. It's not an easy task for a bag in my case, as I use a 16-inch MacBook Pro and Air 3 drone, which is not as small as the name suggests, and I often bring two cameras, plus three to four lenses total, plus some more stuff like clothes. There's also not much room for compromises, because I don't want to get back pain during hikes or problems at the airport check-in, and when I carry my backpack on photos, it should look good. That's why I ended up buying quite a few camera backpacks over the years. So let's have a look at each of them, see what I think of them and figure out if there is actually something like a perfect camera bag. Felt like there was something inside. Okay, let's go. So let's start with the gear that I usually carry so that you get an idea of what I talk about when I go through the bags in a moment. And of course I don't bring the same gear all the time. Like I usually have about three different setups that I bring depending on what I'm doing. My first setup is also the heaviest setup. That's usually when I go somewhere for planned shoots, etc. Then I usually bring two camera bodies. I bring about four to five lenses with me, plus the drone here, the Air 3, and then some other stuff, of course, batteries, etc. And second is my travel setup. For example, in a few days I go to Vietnam and there I will only bring one camera body plus two lenses and eventually also a drone without additional batteries, like only one battery then. Then I can travel carry on only and that's important for me because that obviously saves a bit of money then on flights. That's also the reason why I actually worry a lot about weight when it comes to camera bags because I got weighted a couple of times and it can cause some problems. Luckily I had luck so far but you never really no. And obviously when I travel a bit longer for a month or so then I want to bring more gear. In that case I usually travel with my wife so I give her the second body and lenses in her carry-on bag so we can carry a little bit more. I don't want to put all the expensive stuff into my checked-in bag. I got an iPad stolen for example a few years ago because I put it in the checked-in one and I will never do that again. What's also good about international flights is that they usually don't wait your carry-on bag because you have a checked-in bag anyway. And my third setup is usually when I go on motorbike trips here in the north of Thailand, then I usually bring two camera bodies plus four to five lenses total, plus drone, also my MacBook of course, and clothes. But in that case, I don't carry the clothes in my bag. I have them in a shopping bag actually and just put it in the saddle bag of my motorbike. As you can see, I need to be a bit flexible with my bags and I ideally want to have one bag that does everything because I'm quite minimalistic actually. I don't like to own so many things. And um, um, also when it comes to packing those bags, when it comes to this gear, there are like two troublemakers, one actual troublemaker and one a little one. First troublemaker is the MacBook Pro 16 inch. There are some bags where it just doesn't fit. And then also the DJI Air 3 here. If I want to carry the batteries as well and the remote controller, especially the smaller bags, they get quite full and that can sometimes cause issues because sometimes I have to put the remote controller in another compartment than my drone, which would mean that I have to open two compartments just to fly my drone or even if that's not an issue if I can access both from the back for example I still have the issue that I lose the top compartment and I would usually like to put some other gear inside. I will come to that later those bags as well. So that's the gear that I usually carry to give you a little overview here but I also have a few more tips regarding your bags and packing them etc. So let's get into that. Let's come to the first tip and that is that when you pack your camera like that, like this is the camera and this is the lens, then you oftentimes waste a lot of space because you have some holes to the sides that you could fill some gaps there, but oftentimes the space gets wasted and that's why if you if you put the camera like that in the back, like vertically or however you want to call that, then you usually save a lot of space and that's why it can actually make sense to have a bag that's a little bit thicker that, so that it can hold your camera like that because not every bag can do that, especially the very thin ones. So um, that is something to be aware of if you want to carry a bit more gear. And my third tip is a bit special here for Southeast Asia. You oftentimes rent a scooter when you travel around here. That means that you have the back in front of you between your legs and then obviously you want to be able to quickly grab your camera sometimes when you're standing and if you always have to take your back up and open it etc. The shot is usually kind of had that a lot of times. That's why for 
those occasions, if you travel here a lot or if you generally travel on a scooter, then it actually makes sense to have a bag like that here that you can open at the top, then you just grab your camera and you get your shot quickly. It's actually about this Peter McKinnon bag here, something great about that because it's actually really nice for vlogging, but we will come to that later when we talk about the bag itself. Let's throw this. And my last tip is about traveling with a bag, so like traveling with an airplane. That is, as mentioned before, you can sometimes get issues when it comes to weight. That is simply that I use this capture clip here from Peak Design. This is that you put it on your belt and then you can essentially put your camera there, which is really nice, for example, when you go hiking, etc. But I use that at airports because I can just take my heaviest camera and lens setup, put that here at the back so no one sees it. And then when I weight my bag, it's about 1.2, 1.3 kilos lighter easily, sometimes even more. And that can actually mean that your bag is within the weight limit. And what I also do is that I bring a foldable bag, for example, the one from Peak Design this is what I will use now on my Vietnam trip, where I put all my clothes and some invaluables in, inside. So if I get weighted and uh, they just don't let me enter the airplane, even if I want to pay more, so I actually had this situation before, then I can simply close that foldable bag and check that in. So it's also a little tip just having a second foldable bag and that can also prevent some trouble. But let's finally come to the bags now. Oh, and before we get started with the first bag, I will leave links to all of those bags in the description below. Some of them are affiliate links, so if you want to support this channel, if you found this video helpful, then please buy through those links. You don't pay anything extra, so this is probably the cheapest way to support this channel. Aside from that, of course, like and subscribe. That's always good. Okay, let's come to the first bag. This is the Lowy Pro. I hope they spoke that right. Fast pack, 350AW3. Such a long name, way too long. And to be fair, this is not my favorite bag or so, but I used it over the past few months because it does everything pretty good. It is pretty cheap actually compared to most of the other bags and it also doesn't weigh that much. It's only 1.2 kilograms. Here you see where all your camera gear goes. Usually I had two cameras here. I shot Fuji over the past few months. Also even Sony now is also not that big. Fits inside here. So one camera here, one camera there with lenses attached. Then I had two more lenses in here and here usually my capture clip or some other stuff in the middle. And so this is usually enough gear for a trip. Like I brought it on motorbike trips, etc., and I never had any issues when it came to carrying the gear. Now here on top, this is where I usually fit my drone and that other compartment here, like a drone, you can still fit some clothes over it. You can put the controller to the side and the batteries, like there is stuff for everything. I also like that this bag here has this compartment, like here you can put some stuff inside, more compartments here for like your notebook and a, a pen and stuff like that. And it also has another front compartment where you can fit even more stuff. Like I had my caps in here, my batteries and so on. Oftentimes also a charger and some cables, etc. So overall, when it comes to organization, if your camera setup isn't that big, it's actually a really nice bag. Probably not if you have a 70-200 f2.8 or so, then you don't want to get this bag. But if you travel relatively minimalistic with it, then this is actually quite good. Now, I mentioned before that it's not my favorite bag and there are several reasons for that. At first, this is not really weather sealed. You need a rain cover for it, which of course I lost because we have been on a viewpoint in Koh Phangan. It was super windy and this rain cover got blown away. Honestly, I think that no bag should need a rain cover. I think weather sealing should, should be the standard today. The next point here is also that accessing the gear can be a bit cumbersome sometimes because you always have to open those clippers here and then you can open the camera compartment. That zipper under the clipper here is just a bad solution in my opinion. They did that because then you can attach a tripod here at the bottom. And of course, it's designed like all those low pro bags and also Manfrotto, etc. just look like typical camera bags. I don't know, like maybe you like that design, like design and style is subjective. You know, I'm, I'm a visual person, like style matters, sorry. If you are looking for an affordable bag that can hold a lot, actually even a 16 inch MacBook Pro that fits inside here and you're not, you don't really have a problem with the missing weather sealing of this bag, then this is a bag that I can actually recommend a lot. It's it's just good overall. Like I did not have any negative anything negative to say about this bag aside from those few 
things here. And our next bag is the Peak Design Everyday Bag 30 liters. There's also a 20 liter version, which we would probably prefer or not. Now this is obviously one of the more expensive bags, but it's actually quite nice, especially if you're around in a city. It does fit my 16 inch MacBook Pro, that's good. What I especially like about this bag is that when you open that co top compartment here, it has a kind of roll top. It's not actually a roll top, but like extends via that ladder system here. So you can actually pack quite a lot in that bag. I like that a lot because I'm a big fan actually of roll tops because when you travel a bit longer, you can fit all your clothes in that roll top. That's also the same in the wandered bags that we will come later to. But I think the way how they implemented that is really nice because you can use that as a roll top, but you can also quickly open that. As mentioned before in the tips, when you here on your scooter in Southeast Asia, then a roll top would still be in your way when you want to access your camera quickly but here it's not a problem let's imagine the back is in front of you you open that you take out your camera and you can directly get your shot and aside from that it also has uh, the packing system that I mentioned before, like you can put your cameras in here again, as I said before in the tips section, that's why there's actually a lot of gear that fits inside here. And you can close those compartments here. So you can pack a lens on one side and a camera on the other side. That's actually how I used this back before. I always had my cameras with lenses attached on one side and then I had the lenses itself on the other side. So I could quickly hang the back around on one side where I knew there are lenses, quickly change my lenses, pack everything inside again and done without even putting my back down. And when I needed to switch camera, I knew, okay, let's use the other side. So that's actually why organizing this bag is really nice. Also has other compartments here, like here you see, you can fit so, much thing, so many things in here, batteries, SD cards, everything you need really yeah, here it's a bit more for bigger stuff so overall it's a really nice bag it packs really nicely but the reason why i stopped using that bag is at first weight this 30 liter bag with the inserts is 2.1 kilogram around the 20 liter is i think two kilos around so they are quite heavy actually and also when you look at the back itself, like not really actually the material here, but here on the sides, for example, see like after using that for about one and a half years, it's already torn apart here. It's from all the bags that I used. This is the most damaged actually. You know, style again, it doesn't look stylish anymore. It looked stylish when I bought it though. It actually have a really nice design, I think. And aside from that, this bag is also not really suitable for hiking because there is not an actual padding on the backside or so. I went on a hike with that once and I found it super uncomfortable. Like it was a longer hike. If you do something short, like 30 minutes or so, then of course you can use that. But for like actual hikes where you walk multiple hours and stuff, I would not recommend this bag at all. Anyway, good bag overall, but the flaws are just a bit too big, especially when it comes to weight and comfortability. And let's come to bag number three and four, Nomadic Peter McKinnon bag, see the Luma edition and also Peter McKinnon's 25 liter everyday bag. Obviously what I like directly about those bags, they stand, it's not a must have feature for me, but it's pretty cool. I've, I went with the 25 liter yesterday into a co-working space, took my MacBook out and I realized, hey, it's actually super cool that the bag just stands there. But yeah, let's start with the newer one here, the Peter McKinnon Luma. Now, my problem with this bag is actually a bit the size. So that's the inside of this bag. And as you can see directly, you cannot put the cameras like on the Peak Design bag or so. What I mentioned in the beginning, you have to pack it like that here. That takes up a lot of space. And yeah, then when you have two cameras, especially and a few lenses, and you also want to bring your R3 and stuff like, this for me, this bag really becomes small fast. So that's why I think that this bag can actually be a really good bag if you travel more minimalistic, if you only bring one camera, maybe with two or three lenses. You have a DJI Mini 4, for example, like a very small drone and maybe like uh, some daily stuff that you want to pack at the top. In that case, I would actually recommend that because it's stylish, it's weather sealed. You also have some pockets here to put your SD cards and stuff like that. I think it would be nice to have some dedicated SD cards and battery pockets on that bag that doesn't exist here, unfortunately, but it's also not really a deal breaker. And there's one more thing that I forgot before when you want to carry cameras in that bag, especially if your camera is a little bit bigger, Sony a7 IV, or something like that. And that is that when you pack that inside here, there is like a little 
edge here in front, like the camera is inside there. Then when you grab inside that bag and you try to get the camera out, this camera, in my case at least, uh, tried it with the A9 Mark III, then it always gets stuck here. Like you really have to pull it out. Would be nice if they could somehow reduce that, that edge here. It's, it's not a deal breaker, definitely. You have this top compartment, so let's say our scooter example here again, you could totally fit your camera in here, not with a microphone attached, but you could fit it in there and just grab it quickly and get your shots. By the way, the other bags that I mentioned before, you also could not attach your microphone. Then for them, it's also too small. So again, if you don't have that much gear, it's actually a really nice bag. That's also why I got it. I like the design. Every time I see this bag, I would love to grab it and just go and shoot something. So yeah, nice bag overall, but it's not the bag for me, unfortunately. Anyway, there's also the Peter McKinnon 25 liter. This is what I will use from now on, by the way, because it fits the way that I travel. So let's open that bag and there I can directly show you why this bag is so good. And that is really like the way how you can organize that bag. There is no bag that can do it as good as this bag I figured out. I was actually sleeping on that bag. So, you know, I just didn't want to be that guy that carries a Peter McKinnon bag and everyone thinks he's a fanboy or so. So that's why I completely ignored it when it got released. But anyway, so the nice thing about this bag is really that you have this ladder system. So at first like here, now this is how I will travel Vietnam, by the way, I packed that packing cube inside there. You can also get those dividers here instead of a camera cube, then you travel even lighter and you can organize it exactly as you want to. But I like that a lot because now I can put my drone and my clothes on the top here. That's really good actually. And I can fit the camera in here. I can fit a lens and everything I need in this bag. And it's actually quite small. And what's really nice about this bag, what no other bag has, is when it comes to vlogging or your scooter situation in Southeast Asia again, you can take that camera cube out and have the ladder system here like that. Put the camera cube from the top so that it's here basically just inside and then you can pack your camera from the top with the lens down inside so the microphone goes into another compartment of course to make it a little bit tighter so that the camera cannot move and then you can actually carry your camera with the microphone attached so that you can easily access that all the time from top while you're vlogging or you're walking around while you're sitting on your scooter and you just want to grab in front. There's no other bag that can do that. That's why I would actually say that especially for vloggers, this is an awesome bag. That's also the reason why I will use that bag for the next few months, years, whatever, I don't know, until the perfect camera bag comes out because this is also not the perfect camera bag in my opinion. At first, one more good feature, it weighs about 1.5 kg including the inserts at least I think it's probably a little bit heavier if you use those camera cubes but still 1.6 it's not bad but it could be a bit less but I think that's still in a good range now when it comes to the downsides of this bag at first I wish that it had a few more pockets like you see it has like two big pockets here but you see that's not well sorted really everything just flies together and creates chaos I would really like to have that divided here in the middle that I have a few more options to separate everything. Same counts for the top. You see there's only this pocket here and you see how full that already is. I have two USB-C cables in here, a CFAS Express card reader, a relatively small charger and my camera strap. And this is already so full. Like I wish there would be maybe some more pocket here on the back. It has two more pockets here for batteries, which is good. I also got this battery pouch here from Peter McKinnon. It's actually quite good because has like a system when a battery is empty, you have those stickers here. So you just put that on this side and you know which battery is empty that you should charge it. Yeah, I would prefer to have dedicated battery compartments within that bag. And last is a personal downside style. Again, that's subjective. You might actually like the style of that bag. It certainly doesn't look bad, but when I compare it to the style of that one here, the Luma, or also what we'll come to next, the Wandered Bags, it just doesn't look that nice. It's, it's okay, I can live with that design, but having something ultra classic or this rugged travel look that Wandered gives, and all those bags that always make me want to grab them and go out. Hey Pascal, I'm the orange Peter McKinnon Luma bag. Let's go out and shoot a bit. Oh yeah, it's not really like that, but kind of. So it's not a perfect bag, but a really good one overall. But Peter again, please give us this style in 
this size with the same ladder system, etc. in there, that would be so good. Oh, and they both fit a 16 inch MacBook Pro with case, even the small one here, that's pretty cool. So let's come to the Walnut bags. And honestly, these are my favorite bags, but I had to stop using them. We'll tell you why in a second. Let's first talk about the positive things. Like overall, both bags here, that's the 31 liter Walnut Provoke and that's the Walnut Provoke Lite here, 11 liter plus five liter for the roll top. Same cons here, that's like 31 liter plus five liter for the roll top as well. Now, as mentioned, these bags are pretty similar at first. I love how rugged those bags are. Like you can see a bit of dirt and a few scratches here, but I was treating this bag like shit. Like I went on so many hikes, it was in the rain. I threw it in the dirt all the time. Like this bag can take a beating. And if I would clean that up now, that would look nearly like new. Then the next part, obviously, style factor. I just love how those bags look. I think they, they have both, they look rugged, they look minimalistic, they look classic, they have this nice big part here on top. The design of those bags is just awesome. I think you can't really do it better. And then we also get quite a lot of pockets and compartments. For example, here when you open it from the side, you have this compartment for your batteries. Then at least in the 31 liter, I think also in the 21, but not in the light, you also have a compartment here where you can put in your passport and some other papers. Oh, my old driving license. <laughs> ah, there's my diving card. <laughs> yeah, it looks like this is actually a secret compartment because I still have a lot of old stuff in there. It's actually good that I found that. It has this front compartment if you need to bring some documents for visas or stuff. And if we open that back, you have even more in here. Here are two compartments. There's one big one. This is actually really nice how much storage this bag gives you. And let me also show the one that provoke light there you have a few less like here on the side for example there's nothing for batteries or so but you get this top compartment here roll top of course you also have that front document holder when we open that bag you also see what's special about here is that the camera inserts or the the dividers are already in that bag you don't extra have to buy camera cubes which is actually a huge downside of most wanted bags which i will come to in a second you also have this top compartment and you have all these little ones here just as it is on the 31 liter so you see the light has quite a few compartments less and it's also only 11 liters plus five liters roll top but that doesn't actually mean much i went on a trip from thailand to sweden for three days and i brought the fujifilm xh2s plus two lenses the mavic 3 pro and also closes for those three days but that was totally doable of course it's not perfect you have to pack your camera in that inefficient way what i showed you at the beginning because the spec is quite small and slim especially but the reason why i like the light actually is the weight is it 1.1 1.1 kilos so that's actually a super light bag and that's including all the dividers, etc. And that also brings us to the negative aspects of these bags. At first, the light bag, it cannot hold my 16 inch MacBook Pro. When we're looking at the one that provoked 31 liter, this is just way too heavy. And the reason is that you need those camera cubes for this bag. So you see here, I have this Pro insert in here, which covers the whole bag, but it also weights a lot. Like the bag itself is about 1.5 kilos. And then this insert, I don't know exactly how much it is, but altogether it weights right now 2.2 kilos. But it's actually more than that because you can usually close those camera cubes. And as you can see here, I cut that closure part off that top one to save weight. I just think a bag that weights over two kilos is way too much. And like my personal limit for a bag is 1.5 kilos. And yeah, on this one at bags, this is only because of those stupid camera inserts. The reason why I use this bag so long is because it's an awesome bag. It feels really good on your, your bag. I did so many hikes with that again, and I never had any issues, no back pain, nothing like that. By the way, here's another compartment for like ID cards and stuff. It's pretty cool. Another compartment. There are so many compartments. What the fuck? There are compartments that I don't even know about. The, the design of those bags is super good. I absolutely love that as you can 
probably tell I'm quite excited about those bags always. They're also in orange available now. I would love to get one in orange, but they're too heavy. And now there is one Wanted Provoke bag in between the 21 liter bag, which if you use a small camera cube, would also weigh maybe 1.6 kilos or so, I would be okay with that. But as mentioned, the laptop compartment is about the same size, at least when it comes to the width, as it is on the light bag. And that's why a 16 inch MacBook Pro doesn't really fit. Like you could squeeze it in there, I can also squeeze it in here. That's why I really hope that Wanted comes up with a 21 liter bag, which is at first lighter by incorporating some of the internal designs of the Wanted Provoke Lite and also has a much bigger MacBook compartment or laptop compartment. Pretty good bags, but not perfect camera bags. I think they are quite good if you have a smaller MacBook, 14 inch, 13 inch, etc. That does fit perfectly all at a 14 inch for a very long time before. Then I would probably go for the 21 liter Wanted Provoke. If you travel a lot, if you want to hike a lot, etc., then I think those are really nice bags, especially also because they are so rugged. So much about the Wanted bags. I have one more special bag coming now for FPV. And that special bag is this one here, the PJY Tag. One Mo FPV, I think it's called. And to, to be fair, I said it right from the beginning, I did not use this bag once, and I will tell you in a second why, but it's an awesome bag if you're mainly an FPV pilot or secondary a content creator, because I'm primarily a content creator and secondarily an FPV pilot. So I thought it would be an awesome bag for me when I got into FPV more, and PJ Whitehack actually sent me that bag over. Luckily, they were so kind, so this is the only bag in this video that I got for free. Anyway, let's get into it. Let let me show you why this bag is so good for FPV pilots. So you can see directly this bag looks a bit different than the other bags from the inside. It's also a bit deeper. The reason is that you can put actually two FPV drones on top here. Like this is the first compartment and here on the back you could do the exact same again for a second FPV drone. Comes with dividers for that, like you have those dividers here could put them exactly as it is here on the back and then it fits two FPV drones inside. Plus you can also attach another FPV drone on the outside with those hooks here. Also super nice. So altogether three FPV drones. Then you got compartments here for your remote, for your goggles, and you can also put a camera and another lens in here. I just wish that PJY Tech would have put another divider like that, that you can put in somewhere here so that you could put a camera, a lens, then maybe here your remote controller and here your goggles. Right now, this is actually one of the big reasons why I did not end up using this bag. Then it's also pretty, pretty deep, so the camera would constantly move around in that bag. I want that my cameras stay in place because when I'm hiking or so and I constantly feel something moving in my bag that irritates me. I can't walk properly like that. And let's also have a look at the side pockets. Here, as you can see, you have so many pockets in here. You could put SD cards, you can put screws for your FPV drone, all sorts of stuff. On the other side, you have even more two big pockets where you can put some stuff. You can even put more tools here, like they really thought about FPV pilots. Then of course, you got your MacBook compartment here, also fits the 16 inch perfectly. You see it's actually quite a big bag. Here, really nice padding on the back. That's definitely good for hiking. And when you open that bag, you even have another compartment here where you could fit another FPV drone. That's why I'm saying that if you're primarily an FPV pilot and secondarily a content creator, this is the bag that you wanna go for. And when it comes to downsides of this bag, it also it weights over two kilos. But I also think that especially if you travel with so many FPV drones, you probably don't want to use that as a carry-on bag. Because my FPV, for example, I always put them, put it in a checked-in bag. Because who steals an FPV drone? The drones, the, the people don't even know what that is or if they could sell it or something like that. That's why I think that in that case, the weight might actually not be that much of an issue. So these are all the bags that I tried over the past few years. And of course, there are a lot more bags out there, like from Shimoda, for example, from Tenba, but usually why I didn't even order those bags was simply that they're usually too heavy. I cannot fit something. Shimoda, for example, has some bags that look pretty cool for like longer multi-day hikes or tracks in that case. I'm actually thinking of doing an Everest base camp track in the next few years, but I have to get a bit fitter for that. 
And in that case, I think I would actually use a Shimoda bag for that. They are probably the best for that. It's at least what everyone seems to use. But this is not the bag that I would use as a general bag that can do pretty much everything as I do with the Peter McKinnon bag now. I think the conclusion of this video should really be that a perfect camera bag, at least for me, for the gear that I travel with, does still not exist, but it could eventually exist somewhere in the future if either wandered brings the weight down of the bags and makes a 21 liter at least fit the 16 inch MacBook Pro or if Nomadic comes up with a super cool design like on the Luma bags but in a bigger form factor and ideally with this nice flexibility inside. If you have a 14 inch or anything smaller then you might want to look into the Wandered 21 liter bag because that's in my opinion a really nice one. You might like it especially if you travel a lot. Aside from that if you don't have that much gear, if you travel only with one camera you just don't need that much then actually look in this Luma bag here. It's quite nice. And if your setup is somewhat close to mine, Peter McKinnon, 25 liter bag, looks great. So much for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, the links to all of those bags are in the description below. Please buy through those links. It really helps this channel grow. And of course, leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for upcoming videos. That was loud. I think my wife will complain.